OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome, everyone. Um, so my name is Martha Clayton. I am a I am the only full time uh, ESL faculty person at my home college, which is Los Angeles City College. We are part of a nine college district called Los Angeles Community College District. Um, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is what we call uh, liquid EL civics. Um, this is a part of an evolution. This has been an ongoing project for several years. Um, this uh, started um, way back before the pandemic. <laughs> um, uh, actually, let me ask a question really quick. Is everybody here uh, an EL civics participant? Do your, does your agency or, or school, part, your program participate in EL civics? Okay, I see a couple thumbs up. All right, excellent. You can feel free to turn your cameras on and give me a real thumbs up if you want. Um, or if you're sneaking your lunch, that's fine too. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, hi, Laura. <laughs> so um, when I started working at my, hey, Karina, when I started working at my college, um, EL Civics was a new thing to me. Adult Ed was a new thing to me. And uh, when we started participating in EL Civics, it was, kind of like we were handed a stack of paper and told jam this into your syllabus somehow and I hated it <laughs> and I didn't I was like why are we doing this this is you're telling me two weeks into the semester I now have to include 30 hours of instruction on the DMV that's not in my syllabus how, how am I supposed to do this and you want the results in two weeks <laughs> so we uh We've been kind of playing with a lot of different ideas and, and, and to, to make EL Civics more, um, more truly integrated and more natural. Um, because I think that the skills that we target in EL Civics are incredibly useful. These are real things we all need to know to be successful in, um, in Southern California, in Los Angeles, in California, in the United States. So, um, I've been working for a while to, to with our EL civics coordinator to find ways and techniques of, of kind of making it a little bit smoother. And, you know, we started really simple. We started with doing things like having an EL civics calendar that outlined what the co-ops would be before the semester started. <laughs> so we could actually build our syllabus around um, that important um, milestone and, and step in the process. Um, and so um, one of the big things we did was a few years ago, um, we, uh, myself, I, I and uh, another faculty person from my college participated in DLAC for our, our district. Um, and so what we did was uh, we started a project called Digital EL Civics, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, which may take over your screen. You can minimize so that way you don't have to like see a giant version. Um, so um, what we did was we created canvas ready shells um, that faculty could use. Uh, and we had a few reasons for this. One was my my love hate relationship with EL civics um, tasks and assessments. But the other was that we were trying to increase um, digital literacy skills for our, our in our curriculum overall. And, you know, we kept it sim kind of simple. Um, we would start out with a little module so students could learn how to use the tools in Canvas. Uh, let me actually put this in student view so you can see it from a student perspective. Oops, and so, ooh, I went too far. So, you know, we started step-by-step, step. you know, here's a little, a couple of different tools students need to be able to do in the class, like a discussion, how to make a video, how to record your voice, how to take a quiz. So this would be kind of like our introduction to um, the actual technology skills that we needed them to use. 
And then we worked out um, some really fantastic curriculum. And this was designed by uh, me and a few other uh, faculty members. And we really wanted this, these lessons to be something that wasn't inserted in the middle of something else. We wanted uh, faculty to say, oh, hey, I've got that health unit coming up. I can just, I can add this supplemental unit in Canvas. And so it follows a WAPEA, format, a WAPEA lesson plan format um, with lots of opportunities for students to um, learn all four skills plus the two plus grammar and pronunciation so it's not just limited to um the ta the 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 final tasks they need to do we wanted it to be a real esl lesson and so um for this one this was for our um health and nutrition our nutrition 46.4 uh, we started with healthy food resources. This is where students learn how to um, search for healthy food resources in their neighborhood. Um, we did comparing food prices. So we included vocabulary, um, reading, speaking, grammar, um, presentation, things like that. Uh, so we didn't want students to feel like their course was disrupted or there was some kind of, you know, strange hiccup in the flow of curriculum. So, um, and then there's always like an in-class activity that you do with them to see if they're ready for the assessment. And we also put our assessments in into Canvas. Um, and this has been one of the things people ask me the most questions about, you know, they'll say, uh, well, how do you proctor this? Um, we're in Zoom. I can see everything they're doing. I can have my entire class record their voice in while they're in Zoom and also using Canvas. So um, that's been a real lifesaver. <laughs> so basically what I do is I have students mute their Zoom microphone, um, like, and, but then use their Canvas microphone. So they can do like conversation, role play conversations with me as an entire group. And so we were super proud of this. Um, and we've used this for a few years now. I was in the, um, the DLAC cohort that graduated two, like two days before we were put into lockdown. <laughs> so we were actually flying home from Sacramento and got word that we weren't going to be able to go back to work in person. So. Um, one thing I want to say is that DLAC made it possible for our program to really thrive during quarantine. So if any of you haven't participated in DLAC, I highly recommend it. It really, really helped us a lot. So that was our original project. Um, and we're still working on, you know, improving integration. Um, and one of the things that I've, oh, Carmen Delgado's here. She's my DLAC partner. She's down, she, uh, for me, she's down in the bottom there. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to check the chat really quick to see if there's any, uh, how are, okay. So I have a question here from Lori. Uh, how are the assessments kept secure? If they're in canvas, you put a date on them, you lock them, you can put a date. So students can't open them without a password. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of features in Canvas where you can limit access to different parts. Uh, and that's what I do is I, I give them, a, I have a password, I have it passed, the assessments are password protected. And so they don't get the password until we're in class together that day and go into it at the same time. So, um, no, okay, so next question is from Laura. Um, she says, it looks amazing. Thank you. Um, did you make different shells for different ESL levels or was it one size fits all? So the way that we created the shells, um, for example, for um, that nutrition um, co-op, there are three parts, um, beginner low, beginner high have to do the first two parts and then intermediate has to do the third. So uh, the, the first two and the third. So basically as they move through there, there, it becomes increasingly more challenging. So for students who are only beginner low, beginner high, they're just gonna do the first two lessons and the first two task assessments. For intermediate students, they're gonna do all three. Um, and they're broken apart, so that way faculty can use them in whatever order they want. Um, 
instead of having like one giant module, they're broken by broken up by topic. Um, to teach, uh, do teachers manipulate? Uh, yeah, okay. So this is a question from Karina. Um, teachers can adjust these modules however they want. Um, if they've already covered the grammar topic, or maybe they don't want to cover that particular grammar topic they can totally adjust it they have i'm at a community college so we have academic freedom we don't have a top-down directive on what we have to teach so faculty will adjust them the way they want to they can just unpublish anything they don't want to use um and we tried to make it robust enough that there's a lot to choose from or they can just start at the first one and work their way through it um doo -doo -doo. um carmen Okay, you don't have so, all right. Um, I think that's the last question. If you have questions, please, you can put them in the chat or you can just kind of politely interrupt or raise your hand or whatever. I'm totally open to an open forum. So that was the first phase of our digital digital EL civics project. Um, and I'm still always trying to figure out ways that we can integrate EL civics more. Um, and so this is an example of what I did in the winter, our winter intercession. Um, I was teaching a conversation class and it was a 54 hour class. But because it's the winter session, we met Monday through Thursday and instead of like, you know, once a week for 16 weeks. And so um, what I did was I decided to um, use the EL civics materials for my entire class. And this went in conjunction with us um, developing themes for EL civics for our entire program. So this academic year, our theme is health and nutrition. And so um, what I did was I just used the materials. I mean, this is what we used, um, went through the same process. This is the same module. Um, and I would intersperse the EL civics materials with other materials I use in conversation classes. So we, in my conversation classes, we watch a lot of short films and we have, you know, discussion topics and things like that. So that's how I introduced it. We started with one of our film analysis modules. I'm going to turn my blinky light on. Um, and that led into the first EL civics lesson of healthy food resources. And of course the topics correspond, so they're kind of paired together. Um, and this worked really, really well. Students didn't feel any kind of, you know, strange scheduling. It made sense. The entire class, the topic of the entire course was health and nutrition. And they knew that when they started. So they were just like, okay, let's do this. Um, and so every other module in this class was an EL civics module. And so by the time we got to the end, which was here, mini portfolio, um, they were ready for these assessments. Um, one thing I did notice for like kind of improved integration and better student engagement was I stopped calling the assessments assessments. Um, I found that anytime I said quiz or test or assessment or even like a little check in students uh, affective filter would go up and they would just be like I can't teacher I can't do it and so I changed the name of the assessments to mini portfolio and it was like the it was all of a sudden the sun came up for everybody uh, the students were like hey when are we doing the portfolio do we get to see it after are you going to share it with the office like they had all these excited questions and all i did was stop calling it assessments uh, but i ended up having uh in this class i actually did this with two classes during the winter um, and i had almost a uh, 90 percent participation in um the complete EL civics um, materials and assessments for those classes, which was like incredibly high because half the time students will try and dodge the assessment day and things like that. So um, I totally recommend teaching through trickery if you need to, it really works. Um, and then I just kind of, you know, closed out this whole topic with a final project. Um, and what we did was we watched, um, Supersize Me, the documentary about the guy that eats McDonald's for a month. And, uh, you know, we did some some writing about it. And 
So this was like a little bit more in depth integration, which was really, um, I felt really successful and pretty easily adaptable for um, kind of any class format. Um, do we have any chat questions? Okay, let me just check the chat. Um, no chat questions. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so, but still, this is like kind of preliminary experimentation was really trying to make it a more seamless process. And one of the things that faculty in our program uh, shared with me was sometimes they didn't like the materials that were, were that were offered to them. And, you know, a lot of our books have um, correlative materials, but maybe it's not quite enough um, for that for what they need to do um, overall. And, um, oh, okay, Laura, great question. All of my EL Civics um, Canvas modules are available for free on Canvas Commons. If you type in my name, you will find them. Um, they are editable, edited, <laughs> you can edit them <laughs> however you want. Um, you know, I would love if you, you know, somewhere on there, keep a little credit for City College or something, but, um, you know, I am open to share always. So if you go to Canvas Commons, you can find um, all these materials. Um, yeah, okay. So Lori, totally 30 hours, right? Sometimes I teach, we have a lot of 54 hour classes at my, my location, at my home college. So if you all of a sudden have to do 30 hours on the DMV, you don't have any time to actually adhere to your course outline. So this is absolutely part of my motivation. How can we truly integrate EL Civics where it's seamless and we're getting that 30 hours of exposure to a topic? And that brings us to where we are today. So um, about a year ago, I guess now, um, our voc ed full timer, Kimberly Guppy, who is a fantastic instructor, um, she attended a workshop on something called Liquid Syllabus. And she uh, sent me a link on my phone and I clicked it. And this amazing, beautiful, slightly like animated, dynamic, completely accessible document opened that just blew my mind. And I was like, what is this? And she's like, it's a liquid syllabus. And I was like, well, how, how did you do this? Where did you find this? Like, what's that? What is this that you're showing me? And um, so I ended up doing a training, um, which took like an hour or something. It was really short to learn about this idea of a liquid syllabus, which means that it's highly mobile, highly accessible. That's all it means. And so in the training, they had used um, a tool, they had used Google Sites. Um, now at our college, we don't use Google products, we use um, Microsoft products. Um, that's what we have that's protected by FERPA. So I try to avoid Google stuff um, because I don't know if it's, if it, um, if students' privacy is protected and whatnot. So um, we have a product in Microsoft called Sway. And so I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, this would be really great for EL Civics. We could gather materials, authentic materials, not weird worksheets and strange like scripted interview style dialogues for students to use, but we could actually put together real materials which supports the entire kind of um, principle of EL Civics and base it around our college and community and make something that's really useful for students that is accessible for all levels that we teach and also all disciplines in our program. Cause we have ESL, voc ed, um, CTE and basic skills. And so I didn't want this to be limited to just ESL and EL civics. So what we did was we created let me go back. I'm going to share my screen again. Get ready. <laughs> what we did was we created the um, Let's Get to Work newsletter. And I'm going to send you the link to this. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, and I recommend that you open it on your phone as well.
oops, let me just double check that I typed it correctly. Hang on. And Martha, yes, um, one of your control, I think it's your chat box. It was um, the oh, black blocking on the picture. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just double check this URL and then I'll share again in one sec. Oops. I know I hate those black boxes, right? You would think that Zoom would have figured something out for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by now, hang on. I made a tiny URL for this, so it would be a little bit easier than trying to do the, um, you know, like the generated. Yes, that's it. Okay, so here's the link in your chat in the chat, you can, um, you can look at it on your computer screen, but I would love for you to see it on your phone. So you can see how gorgeous it is for all of our students our non credit students or our adult students who are um, mobile device only. Um, it's completely resizable scalable it works with screen readers, I can make it really small and it still looks good or I can make it really big and it still looks good. Um, it has a um, table of contents button. So you can use this as uh, for reading skills, um, which is really fun with the lower, uh, with some of our lower level students, lower proficiency. And you get these gorgeous um, uh, table of contents images that are based on the things that you put in your sway. Um, again, you can do this with Google Sites also. So if your agency relies on Google products, you can do it with Google. If you're using Microsoft, you can um, you can use Sway. Now they don't need an app for this. They don't need to install anything on their phones um, or their computers. So it's really nice. They don't have to log into an account. There's no sign up. Anybody who gets the link can look at this. And so I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. And move it over there. Uh, and so, you know, what we did was we, you know, just like a newsletter or a newspaper or a magazine, we started with information related to the program. So we start with an introduction. Um, oh, sorry. Um, my mouse is acting up a little today, so I apologize. Uh, we have lots of links embedded. So we're amping up the technology skills and digital literacy. At the same time, we're secretly giving them um, ESL uh, lessons and EL civics uh, integration. So they can click on anything, any link and open it to find out more. So this goes to our, our program website so they can enroll in more classes. Uh, we have a few um, events that we've tied into this. Um, you know, we're always trying to increase our persistence and, and uh, increase our attendance. So uh, last semester we started doing a, what, a family movie night and we schedule these for the Sunday after major holidays. So in the fall, it was the Sunday after Thanksgiving. For the spring, it's the Sunday after spring break because we noticed the biggest dip in attendance after those big holidays. Um, the films that we watch are related to our theme. So in the fall, we watched um, East Side Sushi which has a, a, is a fantastic film starring um, only non-native English speakers uh, in situations that are very similar to the, the life that many of our um, students have experienced being in the United States. Um, and we do that on Zoom. We, we share it on Zoom. We don't have people come to campus. We do the whole thing on Zoom and we have the instructors share instructional materials. We have um, viewing questions. You know, we have before viewing, during viewing, after viewing, because we wanna make it instructional for multiple reasons, but especially so we don't get, uh, you know, a copyright infringement against us for showing films without a license. So um, that's one of our big ones that we've added in that goes with it. And then we also, um, for this spring, we've started, um, we're starting next week, what we call walk and talk Thursdays. Uh, many of our ESL students have told us they have a hard time 
getting speaking practice outside of class. So we decided to have this walk and talk Thursday. Uh, so that way students have an opportunity to speak with people and each other. So it's very casual. We're just meeting at our office and then going up to our track and we're gonna try and trim some of the COVID-20 that we've all gotten in the last couple of years. <laughs> and it goes again with our theme. Um, and we're, we're actually tying it into a little bit of a contest. Students can uh, share their uh, step count and we're gonna create a leaderboard that Sorry, my, in, oh, there we go. Students can enter their step count so we can do a leaderboard and kind of share our success. Um, again, this gives them another technology skill. They're using a form, which is part of the EL, almost every EL Civics co-op has some fill out the form task to it. So we figured we would make it a real, an, an authentic one that we're using. So, um, Oh, Naomi, hey, we have, I have an idea for that. Remind me, don't let me go before we talk about that. So, um, um, Martha, there's another question. Um, oh, from okay. Lori, are staff slash instructors paid to develop these materials? Um, yeah, is, is, I develop these materials. I'm the full-timer. Faculty, like this was, the, uh, oh wait, are you talking about the canvas shells? The, can the original digital stuff? digital EL I was Civics? talking either of them but but this especially seems like an extracurricular kind of thing so I was just wondering do you feel like you're compensated for doing this that's all I was asking oh yeah well I'm full-time so okay. yeah so right. you know how that, you know how that goes <laughs> yeah um this actually is not this was actually pretty fast to make and now that I've done it a few times because I update these at, once a month I change out some of the information and I'm gonna show you how Sway looks. So um, you can see it's, it's, it's really simple. There's templates and stuff. Um, uh, so yeah, the form that students can use to share their step information uh, for the, the, the walk and talk, again, that reinforces those EL civics tasks that, work, that are benchmarks for us. So, Everything you'll see in here is part of an EL civics task or assessment or some goal that we have related to whatever the co-op is. Um, and then we also have a student writing showcase um, where students can submit their writing um, and it's tied, they'll have some questions. We haven't published the questions yet. Um, they have some writing prompts that are related to the theme. And then the last month of the semester, we showcase all their writing. That's what the entire issue is. It's all student writing. Um, and so, you know, all, with Sway, all of these images pop out. So even if you're working with very low proficiency students, there is material, there is material in this that students can that you can use in your class um, and that students can engage with. Um, even our lowest proficiency students can click on an image or tap an image on their phones. Uh, we went with the newsletter format so that way it, it supports all of the reading skills and, and, and academic skills as students kind of transition between um, you know, community English and, and sort of academic professional English. Um, so of course we have tables of contents um, we always have uh, hot skills, some things students need to know, like how to enroll in a class or how to use cleared for access. That's our app we need to get onto campus during COVID. Um, and then we just have a lot of material that's related to the co-op. So again, ours is right now, this year, our theme is health and nutrition. So we've got, you know, how to create a healthy plate from the USDA. We have an article about eating your way to a healthy life in 2020. Um, lots of stuff has links. So you can learn, students can learn more. If you wanna go more advanced, um, they, it can click out to an article that's like at a higher Lexile level and things like that. It's really your choice. Um, we always spotlight one of our certificates and we just, we have a lot of new medical certificates and that goes with health and nutrition. So we highlighted the phlebotomy technician program that we just started. So students can read about it, see if they want to do this. And then if they do, they can click the link to talk to a counselor. Um, we've got videos about some of our classes that we offer. 
And then we always highlight campus resources. Um, you know, a lot of our students come to campus, they go to class and they never look in another building. And so they don't realize that they have a ton of community resources right there at the college. And so um, because, it, you know, again, health and health and nutrition, this month or this semester's campus resources are all centered on our our wellness center, our health and wellness center. So again, there's all this is all authentic materials and students can do all of the things we, we are trying to help them do for EL civics using real things they can interact with on campus instead of just like, you know, paper examples. So you've got phone numbers, schedules, um, um, what do they offer? What's the address? How do they fill out a patient registration and consent form? This one's one of my favorites right now, because when you click on this, um, it goes to the forms page for the clinic. So you can actually use these real materials for students with students in class. There's a fillable version that you can practice online. Um, like this one is actually fill a fillable form, but then there are also um, the English and Spanish forms that you could print out if you want. Um, and students can see what a real form looks like and they can practice in class. And then if they want to, for us, they can actually um, pay a nominal fee to get healthcare on campus. So you can actually get them through that whole process as the EL civics assessment. So like, that's what my class is doing. We're actually going to, um, you know, practice these forms, fill them out, go to the health center, um, you know, make sure their fee is up to date and I have a rubric and I'm just going to check it off and be like, okay, they really did this instead of pretending to do it in a classroom, they're going to really do it, it for their life. Um, so it just kind of goes on. We always have a people in places section um, and we highlight people from Los Angeles. Um, our college is practically in the heart of Koreatown. And so our people in places this month, or actually probably for most of this semester is Chef Roy Choi, who's a local. Um, and, you know, it's got biographies about him. It's got some videos. Um, so people can kind of see the success that other folks who have moved to LA, who they relate to, because, you know, they know them from their community, or maybe they just kind of look like them, or they share some kind of, you know, um, cultural practice. There are a lot of people that are successful in our area who have similar stories. So um, just to kind of reinforce that community feeling. And then um, we include job postings, right? Workforce education and literacy. So we've got our job postings. I try to pick a job that's connected to the theme and then, um, or to one of our, our certificate programs. This time it's a catering job, but students can also click to go to our job center on campus and they can see all of the jobs that are available to them. And almost all of these jobs require um, a high school diploma. Some don't require a high school diploma, but you know they're all kind of entry level positions. So they're accessible for everyone. It's an opportunity for everyone. Um, and then of course, we've got our contact information. Um, and so I'm going to pause for a second and, and answer some questions. And then um, we will we'll look at a couple other things. Um, so oh, thank you, Lori. Lori said something. She said, this is great. And it looks good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and then was it, did anybody open it on their phone or click so you could kind of see how you can resize things? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, no. <laughs> uh, it's just like a class. Oh, awesome, Barbara. Thank you. Okay, I got a great question here from Marin. Um, she's uh, Marin says, how do students? Yeah, it does work great on the phones, right? It's like gorgeous. Students can do it all from their phone, which is really nice. Um, Marin asks, how do students get these newsletters each month? Do the teachers email this information? Do they need to teach it, break it down for students first, or is it posted on the school website? Okay, this is a great question. I love this. 
Yes to everything, um, except the last one about the website. I'm going to show you um, a couple of things here. So it's got a share button. And depending on, like, I make the settings for this. Um, the sharing settings are set up so anyone with the link can share. Um, you, they can't edit. I'm the only one who can edit, but anybody can share it because I want students to also know how to share things. So um, you can share it a couple ways. Um, can you all see the little dial, the little share dialogue box that I just opened? Yes. Okay, so you can make it be for specific groups, people in your organization, or anyone with the link. If you choose anyone with the link, then it's really easy for students. They don't need an app. They don't need their login information. They can just look at it. So um, you can just send the link out. You can copy and paste this link. You can get embed code. If you're using social media tools, you can send it to those. But I love, and there are also more options here, like, do you want them to have a share button or not, and, or require a password? You know, you can get really technical about it. Um, but this is one of my favorites here, this get visual link. This is so good for sending out emails to your students. So when you click on it, it makes this gorgeous little um, graphic. And so you just copy this and then paste that into an email and they get this this picture right here that you're seeing um, and they can click on it. So it makes a really beautiful graphic link instead of just like a text link. Um, and then the other thing we do, oops, the other thing we do is we use Canvas at my college. Let me turn this off. I am in the wrong shell here. Wait, is this the right one? Oops, hang on, let me get the right Canvas shell. So we use Canvas at our college um, and we use it for in-person, online, everything. Um, and so we have a great tool in Canvas called Redirect. And this allows you to put your own link in the navigation of your Canvas class. So right here, you'll notice it says, let's get to work. This is the link to the newsletter. So students can click on this and it's gonna open it for them right away. They don't have to click play. The can't, Sway knows that I'm the author, so it shows it to me in edit form. So all I have to do is tell my students to go to that link um, and then they can read it. So the way that I use this is in some of my classes, it's just extra kind of extra credit, extra practice. And I say, oh, go read it and we'll talk about it in class next time we meet. For some of my classes, we go through and we analyze a text, especially for things like the um, any place where there's a form, if that's a task we're working on, completing forms and personal information, um, or if we are um, uh, talking about how to enroll in classes, we'll watch the video together and then analyze a certificate requirement. Uh, description so that way they can see the real materials and make choices um and then we um uh we can use all those real materials instead of you know a, a, an example one um i'm just going to hit the questions really quick um, um martha there was a question above from karina she asked okay. did you get reassigned time to develop shells sway etc okay so the Canvas shells, the, our, our digital EL Civics Canvas shells, um, we, the, the team of us that did that, we got stipends. We got stipends for that. Um, for the Sway, this is part of my full-time job. Um, it may, curriculum is part of my, my, my obligation. So um, it's actually really quick for, to make these. <laughs> um, so it's not that much time. Um, and it's just kind of part of what I do. Uh, it really depends on your situation. For some agencies or programs, I would definitely, I'm always for getting us more money or, or release time. So it kind of depends on what you have going on. You know, um, last semester uh, when I did this, it was a little bit more of a pilot. So it took me longer. There were some mistakes made as far as like how much updating I could actually do with my workload as well, my teaching load as well. 
And so this semester, um, I'm only updating it once a month. Um, and I actually didn't do a different update between February and March, like February and March are the same because February is so short. Um, it really kind of depends on what works best for you. And you could just have one newsletter that's not updated for the semester and you'd still have plenty of material um, to, to share with faculty and students. So it really, it's really up to how you feel about it and, and how much time you have and what you wanna accomplish or what you wanna include. Um, did that answer your question? <laughs> thumbs up yes okay awesome um so your next question starts with laura okay so have you ever tried to embed this sway newsletter into canvas yes i don't like it um it ends up like it's not it doesn't look as good i'm not really sure how it works with the screen readers uh we have a lot of visually impaired students because our college my home college is right next door to the braille institute and so um I try not to do too much embedding of like apps within Canvas. Like if it's a document, it, it, it's okay, but I just didn't like the way it looked. So um, we discovered the redirect tool, which I can show you guys how, I can show everybody how that works. Um, and uh, it just simplified it by having it in the course navigation instead of having it be embedded in the page. Um, Marin says, how do you decide the topic themes of each month? Do students and teachers give you input as well? Um, okay, so our EL civics coordinator, to, you know, did the needs assessment and our themes were picked from that. So for, um, you know, we had, um, uh, it just kind of happened by happy accident that last semester and this semester we had nutrition and health. So I was like, hey, that's easy. Let's we'll do health and nutrition. That's our theme for the year. Right. So somehow I'm actually going to squeeze in the DMV at the end. Um, and I think I'm going to do that through uh, the way I'm going to connect it is um, it's time to go on vacation. We need to get our licenses to go on that trip to the beach because we need to relax from our hard work, which is healthy. So, you know, I mean, there's some room there. You can play with it. Um, you can kind of make those connections however you need to. Um, but yeah, the, it, it seems that creating themes for EL Civics makes the integration a lot easier because then you have everyone involved. Everyone knows, oh, this is our our group theme for the semester or our group theme for the academic year. And um, it makes it a lot easier to find places where you can get that 30 hours of exposure to the topic, or you can slip it into your class like, oh, we're going to work on this, which otherwise might seem like a strange shift in topic. Um, and uh, it also helps with, um, um, so I have this, uh, so kind of my philosophy for, for especially for, you know, non-credit adult education is that instruction starts at outreach. And so using the themes, um, we can have everybody in our program talking about these ideas, whether a student is coming into the front desk to enroll in a class or pick up a textbook, there is material there on the topic, on the theme. You know, you can hear people talking about our walk and talk Thursdays. They can get access to the wellness center. Like we, we're, I'm trying, um, I'm trying to improve that sort of full integration and and almost like immersion in the theme for um for the semester. So that way, any place they go in our program, they're going to be exposed to this topic, which will add to their their um, overall exposure to the co-op information if that wasn't like a super long explanation. Um, did that answer that question? <laughs> um, okay, so I wanna go back to Laura's question about embedding the, um, the sway. So I didn't um, really like the way it looked and I'm gonna show you, let me just go to my, um, I'm gonna go to one of my development shells. So we can see what this looks like. <laughs> All 
All right, so this is just a development shell that I use. So it's got a whole bunch of mix and match, all kinds of weird stuff in here. Um, and so I'm just gonna go to modules. And so if I wanna embed this in a page, it's going to look like this. So I've got my page, create page, and we'll say, um, uh, let's get to work. <clears throat> and I add my page. And then I come in here and I'm clickety click, edit. And I want to embed, where's my sway? So I'm going to share, I'm going to get my embed code. And when I come back here and I put it in, I just didn't like how it looked like this. And it's it restricts it in the page in a way that I think is kind of a waste considering how like dynamic sway is. So I just did not like this. Um, and that was my, you know, other faculty do different things. I just personally didn't like the way it made it all kind of blocked in like this. And so what I do instead, <sighs> is I go to settings and I go to this apps tab here and I type in redirect. I'm going a little bit faster than my, my internet is, so I apologize. And so I click on this redirect tool, add the app, and I can make the name anything I want. So I say, let's get to work. Do I spell everything right? No. And I put my link in the bottom here. And I'm going to tell it to show in course navigation. And I say, add app. And now when I go to my navigation, it's right here. This shows it at the bottom. I actually move it up to the top in my classes because I want students to click on it. But I just wanted to show you that it puts the navigation, it makes a unique navigation item for your class. And so I put this link into all my Canvas shells. Um, I'm going to leave this and I'll show, I'll show you a live course so you can see what it actually looks like. So this is my, my begin, my ESL level two, like intro to academic skills class. You can see it's right here. Students can click on it, um, and go directly to it. Uh, I also send it out on remind. So if any of you are using like other apps to communicate with your students like Remind or Google Voice or anything where you can send them a text message, um, I send it out on that a lot too. And I, I'll remind, I'll, I will use Remind to remind them and say like, um, hey, you know, don't forget to read that city spotlight that we talked about in class and put the link in there and then they can read it on their phones. Um, and uh, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the whole thing. Um, let me see. I see a couple of questions, so I'm just going to answer those. Um, okay, needs assessment. Uh, how much collaboration between you and the teachers to develop this, or evaluation from teachers? Um, so we have a really interesting situation in my program. I'm the only full time. Uh, there are two full time faculty people. One for ESL, that's me, and another for voc ed. And um, we have about 50 adjuncts uh, who participate in sort of administration style activities to varying degrees. So um, it's a mix. You know, some people collaborate and some people don't. Um, some people offer feedback and some people don't. So it really kind of depends on, on who contributes and who doesn't. Um, 
I get a lot of feedback from our different discipline coordinators. Um, and a lot of the materials I choose for the newsletter, uh, it really has to do with what the topic is and will that material, will that item, whatever it be, whether it's a text or a video or a form or whatever, will that scaffold students ability to complete the assessment in an authentic way? Will students be able to, um, you know, do the thing that we're trying to help them with, you know, whether it's filling out a medical application or calling into their boss uh, to tell them they're going to be absent from work, you know, um, I'm really, really into like authentic materials and authentic assessments. I really do. I cringe whenever, you know, I see an assessment that's like a fake version of a real thing. <laughs> so I'm always trying to find ways where students can really do the thing instead of just doing it in the classroom, because doing a dialogue in a classroom is not the same as calling someone on the phone. And so why waste their time um, having that be the assessment when I can have them actually call me and call in. Um, and so um, it's kind of a mix as far as like the collaboration. It's a mixed bag. Sometimes there's lots of collaboration. Sometimes there's not as much. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I think. I think that m might be all. Uh, so Laura asked a question about Canvas Commons. Um, I'll double check on that, Laura, and make sure that everything's available. But it's not it's not like a huge we don't have Canvas shells for every co-op. You know, we we've got Canvas shells for some um, and then we have. Uh, but I'll double check some of the settings, OK, like later okay, um, to make sure that they're public. Um, I'm just double checking. Oh, so the redirect link. Yes. Okay. So the question is from Karina. Can you do more than one redirect link? Yes, you can. And you can make that redirect link in Canvas go to any external link. So if you have some other material that you want students to connect to without fully leaving Canvas, um, you can put a link to anything there. You could put, you could make one, two, five, a hundred. Um, well, redirect link was one of my, the most amazing things I just learned about in Canvas. It completely changed everything for me. Uh, it was like such a simple thing, but it really, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't have to try and, you know, train students how to like go to this other thing, I can give them the link right there and they can click on it. And it's just like really changed a lot of stuff. Um, uh, Lori, yes, I, I agree. Authentic assessments, right? Like if we want students to be able to do something, then they should actually do that thing instead of doing like the kind of pretend practice version of it. <laughs> um, uh, Marin asked, does Sway have some standalone accessibility features and can it read aloud and can you have it translate into other languages for the lower levels or if you open it in edge? I don't know about the edge question. I don't know. Um, I don't think it, I'm not, and honestly, I'm not sure about the translation thing either. I do not want to translate for this because um, we offer a lot, a lot, a lot of support through translation. And realistically, I think we offer a little too much. Um, with Canvas, we've got immersive reader and they can put their Canvas um, profile into other languages. And I feel like sometimes we're losing a little bit of, of language development. So with this sway, I have not even, Sorry, I just knocked my headphone off. With this way, I have not even looked into it because I feel like they're getting enough like primary language scaffolding um, in other ways. And I really, really want to push them so that way, you know, we've got the, the layer of rigor. Um, now, the way I set up our newsletter is there are varying levels of um, of 
reading levels, right? It varies. Some things are much more simple, like the welcome paragraphs are going to be the most accessible for all students. But I also wanted it to be something that our students who are in GED classes might be interested in reading too. So I tried to put a mix in of, of, um, of Lexile levels and, and complexity. So that way all students can, can participate. And then, um, you know, I really try to have the, the images, um, which would be for our lowest level, our lowest proficiency level students, have the images be connected to the theme in a way that's meaningful. So um, let's take a look at couple, a couple of those. And I don't, I don't know about Edge. You know, I don't use Edge, which is kind of funny considering I use Microsoft for everything else. So let me just minimize this a little bit so it's not so massive. Um, so for example, you can, um, oops, you can click on every single image and it will pop out. So you can actually use that as your primary, you know, demonst uh, demonstration or lecture material, um, especially for your lower proficiency students. Um, you know, maybe here you're talking about, um, fruit and vegetable vocabulary or colors or pr comparing prices, right? So um, I really try to look for things that will assist from the lowest proficiency student to the highest proficiency student. Um, and then also, you know, like I said earlier, I chose the, um, I chose the newsletter format because I felt like this was an easy way to um, embed um, academic literacy skills in the sense of table of contents, headings, um, support graphics, subtitles, um, all of those kind of uh, reading skills that are beyond just being able to read the text on the page, but could actually help carry them forward into like more academic skills focused classes and things like that. Um, but even the banners like this one here, you know, I can click this out. And now we've got nutrition facts, which went with one of our, with our nutrition co-op, um, but still carries over to our health co-op. So you can use these for discussions with the lower proficiency students um, it, or higher for, with any students. Um, but you can also, you know, work on those really um, uh, foundational technology skills. You know, having somebody, we all know that for some students, simply clicking on an image could be an entirely new skill that they've never learned before. So um, yeah, that I guess that's, I don't want to ramble too much. <laughs> um, yeah, all of the images click out. Um, I love the hot skills. Is it okay to share your link? Yeah, you can share, you can share the link. Share, share with everybody. <laughs> um, and I think there was one more question too that I missed. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. So, um, I want to take a few minutes and we have a few minutes left, right, Veronica? Yes, we're done at okay. 2.30. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so I want to show you um, a little bit of the back end of Sway so you can see how easy it is to use. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a huge um, Google suite user, but I do have, um, I do have Google sites open. So I mean, this is, um, this is what the, the workshop I went to about using this for syllabus um, design. They used this and this is, it works very similar, similarly, but you can click on a, a template and then it has, you know, all kinds of, you know, you can change the text, you can do all these things on the right for design elements. Um, so if you're a Google nerd, um, you're probably going to want to use Google Slides. Um, if you're using the um, Microsoft Suite, um, I use Sway, and now my computer is being, oh, close that. And so I'm just going to bring you over to like my dashboard here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, 
so sway is really simple you can create new you can start from a topic you can if you have a document a word document or a pdf that you've used in the past for something you can actually start from that too and it'll put it into a sway that you can then edit which is really really useful if it's your first time using um this tool and you're feeling a little intimidated or nervous um, what I did was I started with a template, um, which was the blog template. And so this is what it looked like when I first got there. <laughs> and I just kind of started changing stuff. Um, so I just clicked on start. It turns it into a template. And then you can, um, you know, it's, you just start typing. You can add images. Um, it's got a little, it's got limited functionality. I mean, it doesn't have like tons of features, but you can do a lot. Um, you know, you can put captions in for everything. You can put an image in. What I really like is that it connects to a whole bunch of options, including YouTube. So I'm able to embed my videos right into it through YouTube. I don't have to do any HTML. I don't have, you can't even see the HTML for this. Um, and so, for example, if we go back to, let me get rid of this guy. Yes, delete. Um, here's the actual newsletter. This is what it looks like when I go to it because I'm the editor. So it always shows me from the edit view, but I can change all of these um, anytime. It's, it's as simple as copy and paste. It really is no more, it's no more complex than any social media you've ever used or a Word document or a PowerPoint. If you can do a PowerPoint presentation, you can do this. Um, one of the things I think is really cool is you can export it and it will make a Word document or PDF. And this is how I archive our different issues of the newsletter. I, I don't make a new one for every month. It's always, I use the same file, so I don't have to change the URL, the tiny URL. Um, and I just save a copy of it. So I can click on Word and it's gonna export it for me. <clears throat> and so let me just save this really quick and I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm going to stop share, open the document and reshare. Come on, friend. And so this is what it looks like in Word document form. So it makes a really beautiful Word document and it also um, will keep the links active. So it copies all the links into the Word document. So maybe you have a student who can't access technology. Maybe they, they don't have a phone, they don't have a tablet, they don't have a computer, no laptop, they just don't have anything. You can, you can give them a document that has all of the same information in it. So no student is being excluded from this for lack of technology resources. Um, they may not be able to click on the links, but they can read them and they can understand what's happening and they can share with the rest of the class. Um, they also pops out all those banner images. So you get the full image. They still have a table of contents. Um, they still have the videos. The videos are embedded in the document. So even if they don't, if they can't see this document on a device, if they're only looking at the printed form, they can at least have, be, have a connection with what's going on and possibly ask another student, hey, can you show me that video on your phone? So, you know, which will hopefully encourage collaboration and teamwork and peer-to-peer um, -peer support. So it, I really love how it keeps all the links active um, and it keeps the formatting almost identical. So um, yeah, that this is what it looks like in the paper format. Um, and I'm gonna answer a couple questions here. Um, oh, Laura put in a really good link to liquid syllabus, liquid syllabi, I don't know, liquid syllabuses. 
Um, they're really cool. Students love it. When you send them a liquid syllabus link, they seem to get really excited. So um, do you link to previous newsletters in the current one? No, because I only use one Sway file. So what I do is before I do an update for the month, I export the document version and then I just I just put the new information on top of the old one. Um, one of the reasons that I decided that is because one, I didn't want to deal with storing a whole bunch of old sways. If I'm going to update this every month or every two months, I didn't want to have just like dozens of sways in my dashboard. Um, and also I really want to keep it like a dynamic living um, document. And so one of the things that has frustrated me about EL Civics for a long time is I'm handed the same materials that I was handed five years ago. And I just don't think that that's, that's really valuable. So I wanted it to be um, really contemporary, like really in the moment of what we're trying, of what we're trying to accomplish with the, with whatever the task is. So I don't keep, um, the digital sway, like, like for last semester, I only have that in um, Word and PDF format. Now you can take that Word or PDF document and you can put it back into sway and make it a sway again. But I wanted to just have like the document form for, for like the, the archive, so to speak. Um, and Martha, there was a question from Marin. Do you provide a lesson plan to teachers on how to teach scaffold these newsletters? Um, yeah, uh, we put together like a user guide when we first launched this. Um, and then, then they're on their, you know, they're on their own. They can do whatever they want with it. They can use it if they want. They don't have to. Um, I really kind of promoted it to faculty as, um, something that students could engage with a little bit more, um, independently. So, you know, or use it for, um, warm up activities, you know, to kind of use it as like kind of a frame around other things they're doing. Um, for one reason, I didn't want people to feel like they were being told what to do or anything like that. And I wanted them to, um, see it as like a useful tool that they could use right away. Um, I think I have, let me show you all the, where do I have that? I know I put in a, um, a user guide. Um, I think it's, let's see, Yale Civics Newsletter, yes. Okay. So in our digital literacy um, Canvas shell, that's the one the faculty use to share um, materials and information. Uh, I started a module called EL Civics Newsletter Training Video and Instructional Guide. And so um, in here, we've got like the training video, which was from a, um, a Zoom that we did, a Zoom training. It's probably really boring. It's just us talking. So I kind of walk, I walk faculty through it, like what it was and how, and ways to use it. And then we also had, um, sorry, I'm all over the place here. Come on. Then we also, I also created an, a, an actual document instructional guide that kind of talks about different things they can do at different points. I'll make this bigger for everyone. Uh, so it has a description here of what it is. And then, um, you know, how to like, what is it for students? What is it for instructors? And then how it related to our co-ops. Um, and then I did, you know, language and literacy objectives, the tasks, and then how it all connects. So I don't do this for every single issue. I didn't do, honestly, I did that one in fall to get the ball rolling. And now we just kind of talk about it when it comes up. Um, so yeah, I mean, faculty have complete freedom to do, to do what they want with it. 
Um, some faculty have told me, oh, it was great for showing students how to use a YouTube video, how to use the features on the, like the controls for a video. Um, last semester, we had one of our videos was about using student email. So a lot of faculty use that to show their students how to access their email. And then students kept going back to the Sway to review the video when they wanted to check their email. So they ended up kind of organically reading articles and then asking questions about it and things like that. So um, we're not using it with like super strict guidelines by any means, which it was really kind of part of it. We wanted it to be really organic and, um, and let people do what they wanted with it. But there is like, there is a methodology like in the back of my head on like what articles I pick and how that connects to a co-op and, and what campus resources I, you know, we highlight and how that connects to everything. So there's, there's a method, but then from the front, it, it feels really natural. Um, is it possible with either tiny URL or bit.ly to redirect, redirect existing short links. This way you wouldn't need to delete, rewrite everything. Um, probably I'm not, yeah, I'm just not doing that. <laughs> it's just easier. It's just easier for me. I just do it this way. Um, you know, some people like to archive the whole sway and then they make like, they make like a new one. Um, I just copy over the old one and I save the, the art, the paper, the word document or PDF or uh, archive. Um, cause that's just what works for me, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I can share the user guide with you for sure. Let me, um, let me grab that for you. Um, like I said, I did the, I, <laughs> I did the, um, the user guide once and then I was like that's it I'm not I'm not going to do this every time but I did it to kind of get our faculty up to speed on that. Um, let me save a copy that I'll share with you. <clears throat> okay. And I'll, I'm going to put this in the chat for you. And I went kind of like nerdy and whatnot on the inst on the instructional guide. Um, but yeah, but I figured like once we all started using it, then people would kind of make their own practices and, and habits. And, and I did, I really didn't want it to feel like another example of EL civics, meaning somebody's going to tell me what to do in my class, because that was the way that I always felt about EL civics. Like, someone was handing me a paper and saying, you have to do this and this is how you need to do it. And that really bothered me. So I tried to avoid that. So um, the instructional guide was really kind of more like we did that. We made this thing. Here's a bunch of stuff you can do with it, but you can also do whatever you want or, or not use it at all. <laughs> so that is in the chat. Anybody can, can download that and you can have that. Um, and then Barbara asks, um, Martha, can you tell me how many of the teachers are using it? And I don't remember what that was in reference to. Oh, probably maybe of, of using the Sway. Um, you know, I don't know exactly how many are using it this semester. Um, we've had about, uh, for the last couple of semesters, you know, because of um, the situation with COVID, we um, uh, had limited, you know, it was only seniority staff was working only seniority staff was assigned and or mostly like 95 percent and so uh that was about 30 30 to 35 people and i would say i think when i checked last semester when i kind of like informally polled people um it was about um everybody had at least shown it to their class but then using it really actively and making lessons around it and really integrating it into their into their syllabus and into their class practice, their community, their community practice, their classroom practice. Um, it was about uh, it was over half of them. Um, now, one of the things I really like is that when I go to my sway, if I click on like the main sway button, 
I can get analytics. And this little number here in the lower corner of this, the icon for each sway that I've made shows me how many people have looked at it. So, um, so right now for this one, for, for this sway, we've had almost 900 people look at it since I published it. It doesn't really, uh, it breaks down the analytics by time, like how many people have glanced at it, how many have done a quick read and how many have done a deep read. Now, I don't really know how they judge that in this. Um, I'm going to assume it's by time. Um, but you can see we have a lot of people who come and look at one thing quickly and then maybe move on. And that's okay. Um, I feel like it's been worth the, the commitment. Um, and I think it's going to get better as we expand its, you know, expand the integration um, and, and kind of like come together as faculty to think of other ways that we can improve it or, or make it work even more for like more students. So, um, you know, we really only started this um, uh, at the end of last summer, our, our intercession at the end of last summer. So I would say that we're still kind of technically piloting this because it's, it's only the second semester uh, or really third semester, fall, winter, and now um, spring. Um, so we'll know more. I'll have more data at the end of the semester, I guess. I don't really have a lot of data right now. So um so yeah, that's kind of the whole, that's, that's liquid, liquid EL civics. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see if we have any other questions. Yeah, there, there was more from, uh, or one more, excuse me, from okay. Mary. If some teachers decide not to use this resource, is there another way all students can access this? Oh yeah, they can, they can just go right to the link. You know, um, a lot of faculty like just put the link on their syllabus or they, you know, they don't necessarily teach with it, but they give out the link. So, um, yeah, it's it's completely accessible for any student. They just have to be given the link. That's it. So, you know, and there are, there are people who are doing that, you know, like they maybe um, used one part of it to demonstrate something, but then they. Um, uh, if teachers, if people don't share the link, they, they don't share the link. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, they could ask in the office, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, teachers are the ones who are sharing information in general. So if they're not sharing something, um, then they're not sharing it, which would make me really sad. And then they'd get my sad face and hopefully feel really bad about it and then share the link. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's all about sharing. Could you share it at outreach? Yeah, you can share it anytime you want. You know, you could put it on the, on your postcards, use a tiny URL. Remember, you know, instruction starts at outreach, put that tiny URL on your, your postcards you're mailing out to your community and get students going to it that way. So they're learning even before they're enrolled in a class. Absolutely. I would love that. That's like my dream right there. <laughs> So that's a really great idea, Lori. I love that. Um, okay, cool. All right. Any other questions for me? Did I miss anything or anything unclear? It's a hundred percent free. I'm assuming you mean sway, Marin. Yeah, we, we have Microsoft Suite is part of our college. So all students get the Microsoft uh, Office 365 uh, Suite for free, but you don't actually need to have the suite to access the Sway. So even the students who like, don't even know they have student email and they don't, you know, maybe they don't even know what Microsoft Office is, you know, um, they can still access Sway on their phone because I, I have the Sway um, um, sharing features to be anyone with that link. Uh, yeah. Hmm, that's weird. It, did anyone else have trouble opening the instructional guide? Let me just make sure it, oh, okay. Um, you know what? I'm gonna really quickly make a PDF 
just in case. And uh, I'll put that up also. I'll put them both up. Just in case. I know, you know, sometimes the, the chat is not always 100% with the um, that share feature. So oh, I'm such a dork. I just saved the PD. I saved it, named it PDF, but then saved it as a Word document. Uh, I just put the Word document up there. So, um, and then we'll also do that one. <laughs> Let me just double check that to make sure I didn't do it twice. Okay. And I'll put the PDF up there for anybody who prefers that. So hopefully you can open those. Let me know if that one opens, if you have any trouble opening that second, the second one and the PDF one. Okay. All right. Okay. We have, we, I think we have like five more minutes. So hit me with your questions. <laughs> What's the login for? Um, I, is that for me? There shouldn't be a login for anything. There should not be a login on, there is no login for Sway. Are you being asked for a login, Marin? No, just I noticed on the settings wheel you could you can log in, and so I thought, oh, that's maybe for modifying or I'm I could oh, access okay. everything without logging in, but I just wondered um, there there was that option to log in under Hotmail or you know Microsoft. So um, the way let me I'm gonna sh I'm just gonna share my screen one more time and. Um, or as many times as we want. <laughs> uh, so when I'm check when I'm looking at it, so here if I go to the sway, when I go to the share, we there are options here where you can restrict it. You could make it um, specific people or groups, people in your organization, or you can require a password. So you can modify the sort of security and sharing settings. I just make it anyone with a link and that also that everyone can share. Um, and you, you know, you can reset the share settings and things like that. Um, because I want, I want it to disseminate. I want students to share it with their family, especially when the student, when their writing is in there for the student writing showcase. So, um, I make it completely public. So that way it's, there's no password, no login, no app that you need. Um, and, uh, um, which should allow you. Oh, uh, so yeah, I make it completely public and open, um, because I want, I want them to share it with as many people as possible. Cause it's also advertising for our program. You know, it's, if students are like, Hey, this is cool. My cousin wrote a, an, a, you know, an essay for her class and now she's in this newsletter, check it out. And they start sharing it and they're like, oh, hey, this is LA City College non-credit. We're going to go sign up for their classes. Like, you know, I feel like it, it, it fulfills multiple um, uh, jobs. It's not just EL Civics, it's also a marketing tool. So um, yeah, so yeah, I make it totally public. Um, all right. Okay, Laura's got some good notes here about um, Office 365. So yeah, it all it kind of all depends on what your agency uses. I know some are more Google Google oriented, some are more Microsoft oriented, but the the Google Sites um, uh, liquid syllabi are awesome too. That's another great way to do it. Um, yeah, so whatever is most accessible to you is a, a really good way to do it. Um, and students definitely love the the writing showcase, you know, the fact that we do the the last 
last issue of the semester is all student writing. Or, and they can also submit videos too. Uh, we just haven't had any submit videos yet, but they're encouraged to submit videos, artwork, writing, anything that they want. Um, because eventually I would like it to be student managed and not faculty managed, but that's gonna take a few years until we get to that point, I think. Um, all right, okay. Any other questions? Oh, you are welcome. <laughs> Oh, let me, I'm going to put my email in the chat. Also, you can also email me anytime to um, talk about Sway or newsletters or um, teaching through trickery or ways to make EL civics um, more, uh, more integrated and kind of less of like something that makes people groan when they know it's time. Uh, so, uh, if that happens, that might not happen where you are. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you have my email and you can contact me anytime. Again, my name is Martha Clayton and I am from Los Angeles City College in the Los Angeles Community College District for non-credit adult education.